welcome back. Let's take another tour. Right now it's August 10th and the hydrangeas are in full bloom, black-eyed Susans are blooming, everything's blooming. So it's a really pretty time to be touring the garden. This is the garden that surrounds the mailbox and there's a little hydrangea tree, black-eyed Susans, Russian sage, zinnias, sage, oh, daylilies, some thunbergia that's not big enough, some bee balm, and I forget what that stuff is that's in the middle there. It's like a succulent. Sedum? Sedum, yeah. So surrounding the front door, there's a big pot with a uh, super tunia, vista pink bubblegum, and white night alyssum, and also a honey super tunia. And there's all kinds of little pansies or <coughs> violas popping up from the pot. There's pots of petunias and verbena, lots of hydrangeas. The front one is a bobo hydrangea, it doesn't get very big. The hostas have looked better. They, I trimmed a bunch of them off and they have a lot of holes in them from the slugs that we had. There's some Dusty Miller, more purple verbena, lobelia, and my Annabelle hydrangeas are now starting to turn green, but one of the endless summer hydrangeas finally decided that it's gonna have some buds on it. So it must not have wanted to be ripped out. There's an ornamental kale or flowering kale, some gara, more super tunias, some purple fountain grass. Then this big hydrangea that's all one plant, and that is a vanilla strawberry hydrangea. And it'll get dark pink around the bottom. You can see where some of them are starting to turn light pink, and then it'll it's like an ombre effect where it's white at the top. It's huge though. It's probably 10 feet sideways and it's one plant. There's a huge pot of the mini petunias. And then on a vintage chair, there's a galvanized bucket and it's got some pots with petunias and the mini petunias and verbena. And then we passed by more hydrangeas that were the, the bloomstruck from Endless Summer. And they do have blooms on. This is a little lime hydrangea, so it doesn't get as tall as the limelights, but it's huge. That's also one plant. There's a big hanging basket. And those are proven winners plants. I got that at home. Actually, my husband got it at Home Depot. There's a galvanized planter with verbena and there's a zinnia popping out of it. There's mums back there, black-eyed Susans, more hydrangeas. And the, the dead thing back there, it was a hollyhock that I don't know what happened to it. I just got it this year and it all of a sudden turned. There's a butterfly back there on the cornflowers. This is a limelight hydrangea, so it does get taller. I think they get to be eight feet tall. And there's also a huge sunflower back there with multiple heads on it. This is also a limelight hydrangea, but I planted it a couple years after the other one, so hopefully it'll catch up soon. This is there's a vintage wagon, kids wagon underneath there with a big galvanized tub. And there's one of those petunia plants, which is Vista Fuchsia from Proven Winners. One of the alyssum, which is the white knight. I forget what the verbena was called, but that's also Proven Winners. And then some coleus and a red fountain grass. And it has just filled the whole pot. I had problems this year with this garden where the bunnies ate all my zinnias. So they had to be planted three different times and they're finally blooming. And since they weren't blooming and I was anxious for flowers, I planted 
five of the Proven Winners Super Tunias. So I have three of the pink and two of the honey colored. I also planted two vanilla strawberry hydrangea shrubs in here. And then these zinnias finally took. The rabbit left them alone. This is a pinky winky hydrangea. And these also start out white and then they go to a darker pink on the bottom and the white on the top. This is also one plant. I think it's been planted for about four years now. I did have a lot of red bee balm next to it, but my bee balm started with powdery mildew, so I ripped it out of the ground and I'm going to have to find different bee balm that doesn't get the powdery mildew. So there were a bunch of daylilies here that I just cut back. There's a, a old-fashioned rose bush here at the end and that was also really cut back but it's starting to bloom again. There's some sage, another one of the old-fashioned mm -hmm. rose bushes, cone flowers, and I just cut back these irises too. I think I might cut them all the way to the ground but there's mums in here that if I don't get rid of these iris leaves they won't bloom. There's zinnias that I planted and the, this Russian sage plant is huge. I see a couple weeds sticking out of it but you just have to forgive that. There's more sedum, black-eyed Susans, another hydrangea. This one, I don't know what it was. It was like one of those cheap ones that you buy at Menards for $6 or something. Another Russian sage, an incredible hydrangea with some, it was all surrounded with daylilies that I just chopped down and then hostas. So hopefully the daylilies. So this is a out. vintage wheelbarrow. We got it at an estate sale and I have one pot with one Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum and one Super Tunia Honey and one Super Tunia Bordeaux and it's gotten that big. Uh, it's huge. Uh, so this sits in the middle uh, of the yard and I just move it to mobile home. <laughs> you smell grandma's flowers? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. huh? planted and those also had to be planted three times. The rabbits and the rain were relentless this year. So behind the zinnias I have three pots and they all have the flowering kale, there's basil, super tunias, parsley, more basil, Thai basil, alyssum, And then one of them even has a tomato plant that broke off when we were planting the tomatoes, so we just stuck it in there. So my tomatoes are finally starting to do better. I finally have enough that we're going to do yard sauce, so it's very exciting. I had beans planted in these two pots and they were coming up so nice and I had this fence over it and I came out here one day my tomatoes had bite marks in them and they had eaten all my beans. So, <laughs> I'm never going to have any beans this year. <laughs> but I have peppers, I have tons of cucumbers, I have tomatoes, and that's it. Maybe some eggplants. But I have been getting a lot of cucumbers. The, the trellises have worked great for it. You can just see them hanging along with the Black Eyed Susan vine. So it's been really fun to have these. There's a pot with alyssum and gara. And then on the ends of all of the trellises, there's the sunversia, the black eyed Susan vines. But you can just see the cucumbers just hanging. And every day I pick a few. There's, you can see tons of them there. Yes, and I have had to come out every every morning I come out and I shove the the trailing ends in 
like you can see two of them back there that need to be stuck in so that they'll go up but they've reached all the way across and it's just a fun addition to the garden I have lots of zinnias planted here and they're finally blooming and I've been able to pick a bouquet for myself every few days and I just love having them and they're great to bring on all the bees and the butterflies to keep your garden pollinated. I have some sunflowers growing. That one in the back. And then there's a, a black-eyed Susan vine also growing up the ladder. Yeah, and Chelsea's laughing because there was a squirrel that jumped on that sunflower and that's why the branches are broken off because he tried to use it like he was a gymnast <laughs> and he broke everyone off as he climbed up. So my second helping of raspberries will be ripening soon and all the plants are just loaded with raspberries. Now the leaves were attacked by um, right. the beetles. What are they called? Japanese beetles. Yeah. Um, but it hasn't starved the fruit production on it at all. And I'm not seeing those anymore, so that's good. But that's the bite marks that you'll see in the leaves. So there's some cone flowers growing out of there. This raspberry patch started with three plants, so it's really grown. There's more gara, another purple fountain grass, another flowering kale, Alyssa, mini petunias, and regular petunias. More zinnias, sunflowers, and the annabelles that are turning green. Can you smell it? Smell it? Good job! Oh, good job! So this area was not here last year. It was here, but it was grass. And I decided that I didn't want to have to worry about weeding up against the fence. So I ripped out the grass and had the garbage man cart it away. <laughs> She got in trouble for that one. She was just <laughs> filling bags of hey, dirt. Hey, hey. You're eating a rock. Stop it. So when I planted my zinnias, these were all my specialty expensive packages of seeds. And there's the queen red limes right there. The best ones I already picked and brought in the house, but there'll be more. And then there's red sunflowers and the rabbit ate the top of the sunflower off. So it made two stems come out of the one sunflower. So now I have the two out of one stalk at the bottom. So it pushed them kind of yeah. like when you're picking herbs. And then there's this other big sunflower. I planted a lot of sunflowers in here, but only I only have three or four that came up. And this one is one of those multi-branching ones with lots of big heads on it. So but there's lots of pretty varieties of zinnias in here. I love this one that looks neon down here. And the ones in the back that are the orange and the red. So we went to a flea market yesterday and I found this great vintage wagon and I filled it with flowers. So next year this will be cut out bigger. I'm gonna have a bigger area cause it's too hard to cut that corner with mowing. So it's gonna be more flowers in the corner. There's another, I think this is a strawberry shortcake hydrangea. It doesn't get as tall as the vanilla strawberries. There's more zinnias and catmint, and the zinnias aren't blooming yet. Coneflowers. This is a quick fire zinnia, or hydrangea, <laughs> sorry. And then another patch of zinnias. They're finally getting big and they just look amazing. I just planted two of the incredible hydrangeas in here and then I have a bunch of sunflowers growing and this one for some reason is like bent and it's got a huge stalk and it's curved so it's got really pretty flowers on it though so I don't want to lose it but it has to lay down
So here's more of the bubblegum super petunias from Proven Winners and then a pot of mini petunias on a vintage chair. There's flower pots with annuals, lots of alyssum, petunias. There's some asters growing out of there. There's some Prince Tut grass. Ow. And then I love galvanized buckets. So there's a bunch of buckets filled with annuals. There's more cat mint down here, cone flowers. I also planted another incredible right here. There's a lot of Russian sage that I need to rip out of there because it doesn't get enough sun so it lays down. Zinnias. Okay, so there's more zinnias. And then in the, the box on the edge of the patio, there's petunias and zinnias, lobelia, alyssum, Prince Tech grass, super tunias, more zinnias and more petunias. On the table, there's a pot of basil and oregano with alyssum. And this is a wrought iron stand with three, it has three hanging baskets and it's mostly verbenia, petunias and lobelia. And the verbena is just beautiful with the white ones. In the corner by the fence, there's a chair that we got at a flea market, and there's a galvanized bucket with a pot on it. And there's little mini roses, cone flowers, and black eyed Susans underneath, and some catnip for Calvin. So out in the front by the fence, there's more zinnias, there's lots of sedum along the fence, black eyed Susans, and there's a tomato plant that was a volunteer and it's got tomatoes on it, so I couldn't let it go. There's more verbena in a pot, and then I found some of the Proven Winners Super Tunias on clearance at Walmart for $1.50 a piece, and they looked bad, but I brought them home, trimmed them up, and they're doing great. There's a white coneflower in the back. So this year she's had, a, would say, a handful of these where they bloom and there's no petals. That could have been those little yellow finches ripped the zinnias apart to get to the insides. Oh. There's also a diggy lily back there. And I see a few weeds. But you guys will forgive that, right? <laughs> I won't. And more of the Annabelle hydrangeas that are now green. And this is the perfect time to get them to dry.
So thanks so much for taking the tour. And Chelsea will have her garden tour at the end. So stay tuned to watch that. And we're also doing a yard sauce video today. So be looking for that.